Let's utilize ChatGPT. Welcome back to my channel. So we are going to be utilizing ChatGPT and this is part one. In this particular scenario, we are going to be using ChatGPT to build a real life end-to-end -end data science project. So we'll use it for project planning, data analysis, data pre-processing, model selection, hyperparameter tuning, developing a web app, and deploying it on the spaces. So with part one, we are just going to touch on the project planning and the data analysis section. ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence language model developed by OpenAI. It's essentially designed to understand and generate human-like text, allowing it to engage in natural language conversations, answer questions, provide explanations, and generate coherent and contextually relevant responses. I personally think it is wise to utilize technology. We have ChatGPT, and so you need to see it as another resource to help guide and assist you. And so in this project, we will be using loan data and we will be planning a data science project around it. ChatGPT is best utilized when asking in-depth, detailed questions. And so we notice on our first question or our first prompt, we are giving a description of what our loan data set looks like. We are saying the number of rows, the number of columns, and then we are explicitly giving the column names. And then we are asking a question, can you list out the steps that I have to follow to develop an end-to-end -end project for my portfolio. So let's see what ChatGPT, what the output of this is. And so we see that right away, ChatGPT gives us a response and it is telling us step-by-step -step what our approach should be. So it's telling us to define the problem. That is the first step. It's telling us the, sec the second step should be data pre-processing, uh, cleaning and preparing our data for analysis. The third step is exploratory data analysis, feature engineering, model selection, model training, hyperparameter tuning, model deployment, documentation, presentation, and a conclusion. And for the next prompt, we are asking ChatGPT to please include class imbalance issue uh, and the project goal, which is to accurately predict loan not paid back. So we're going into further detail. So with the questions with ChatGPT, it sort of has a running log of what the previous questions were. So it's already got that information stored as it knows that we're working on this loan data set, right? So now we're just building off or building on top of the previous outputs. And so it gives us a, it gives us a response here and it's saying step-by-step step what we need to do. And so it's giving us specifically how to handle the class imbalance that's on number four. And so we can read this, let's see what it says here. So it's saying, address the class balance imbalance issue to prevent the model from being biased towards the majority class. And so it's saying resampling techniques, explore techniques like oversampling, and then it mentions implementation of sampling, applying the chosen resampling technique to the training data set. So it, it gives you recommendations, but of course, based on your data, based on your understanding of the data, you need to ultimately make the, um, the proper decision. So it, it the way how I see it is that it gives you recommendations, it gives you maybe ideas, it expands on your ideas, and it is good for you to sort of further elaborate. Our next question is, or it's actually telling ChatGPT that we will be creating a web app using Gradio. Just to let you know, Gradio is a free and open source Python library that allows you to develop an easy to code customizable component demo for our machine learning model that anyone can use anywhere. It integra uh, integrates the most popular Python libraries, Scikit-learn, PyTorch, NumPy, Seaborn, Pandas, TenderFlow, and others. 
So let's see what the output. So to go back, we were asking ChatGPT to, well, we're telling it that, hey, we're gonna be using a web, web app radio and that we will be deploying it on Spaces. And Spaces simply is a free way to host our machine learning apps in Python. And if you read the output, it is giving us a 15 step process of what we need to do to deploy our data on Gradio and Spaces. And as we continue, we are going to be asking ChatGPT to write us a Python code to load and perform our EDA or our exploratory data analysis on our loan data set. And so the output that ChatGPT supplies is a snippet. It's a cold snippet that demonstrates how to load our loan data set and perform basic EDA. It utilizes libraries such as Pandas, which is the data analysis library, Matplotlib, this is allowing uh, Matplotlib and Seaborn, which allows us to visualize the data. And so we have the output here and it has laid out the packages that need, the libraries that need to be imported, as well as the, co the code snippets, as well as comments on what this, what each code means and so it's it's pretty much going into detail and so now we it's wise to look over the data and then to determine if this is the correct flow in which we wish to see and which would give us the most optimal output for our data and so it tells us to make sure that we're loading our data and not just because it gives us loan underscore data set um, dot CSV, but that may not be the name of our data. So it's just saying, make sure that you point to the correct path. And then it's also telling us if you don't have the necessary libraries installed, please install them. So what you see now is I'm going into Jupyter Notebook and I have, I have this line of code, the import OS, that's the operating system os.chdir that is pointing to my directory where my data is, my working directory. And so I'm just organizing this a bit here and then we are going to run this code and evaluate and analyze the output. And so we've navigated to the data set that we are going to ingest into Python. And I'm just showing you the column names, the rows and so this is our excel data set that we downloaded that we are now going to ingest into python and apply the scripts from chat gpt so i'm just making sure that everything looks okay evaluating that and now we are going to update the name here and here i am just updating the data set name so I'm going into my file and updating that to loan underscore data. So I just validated that. And now we are going to inspect our data. We're looking at the first few rows of the data set. You determine that by putting in your data set name dot head. And if you do the parentheses, it is showing us the five rows of our data. And so we see here, and now I am looking at the summary description or the summary statistics of our numerical columns and so this is showing us the count the mean the standard deviation min the 25 percent 50 percent quartile the 75 percent quartile and the max so it's just taking all our numerical columns and showing us um, is giving us the output of these metrics and here we are looking at the info so this tells us what our data types are within our data set. And so if you type in the data frame dot info, that's what that will show you. And here we are showing a count plot of how many loans have been paid and how many loans have not been fully paid. And so Seaborn allows us to look at this pretty useful plot here.
And now we wish to see a histogram of the distribution of FICO scores. But we see we have an error. It's telling us that module Seaborn has no attribute hist plot. So now chat GPT, they provided this output, but however, we're not able to see, we're still getting an error. So that's just telling you, even if chat GPT gives you a response, it may not be the correct one, or it, it doesn't know all of your libraries that are installed. It doesn't know the full picture. It only, it's only, it only has what you tell it, right? So we do have to do some further investigation here. I'm just outlining the attribute. I'm looking at the Seaborn documentation. I'm going into Google. And a lot of times as a data scientist, even as a software programmer, you will have to, Google is your best friend. You will have to do research. You will have to, you will have to search and research and be strategic and figure out what errors are, sort of reverse engineering or by Googling. And so I'm looking in here, it was saying that it could be that our package is not installed. So I'm trying to install uh, and PIP is a management system used to install Python packages. So it's given us the output and it's actually telling us we could not install due to an environment, environment error and access is denied. So let's see if we can work around this. This is may, this may be due to me having the Anaconda um, the Anaconda environment, it has to, I'm thinking it's something that has to be something within that. And perhaps I need to go actually into the Anaconda environment. So I'm just running this again, just making sure if I type this correctly, I'm just doing a little bit of a troubleshooting here, making sure that I spelled this correctly, SNS, that's correct. So SNS meaning Seaborn as SNS, because that's what the script is calling for. And so now I'm just breaking it out into these two individual lines of code. And now what I'm doing is I'm utilizing ChatGPT and I'm putting in that error. And so the error message and I'm saying, ChatGPT, can you please explain this error? And let's see what the output is. I'm saying, can you please tell me the solution to this error? The response is saying, sorry for the confusion. And it is giving me an updated modified code. It's basically telling me that it could be the fact where I need to update my Seaborn, my Seaborn library, and that I may have an outdated version of that. What you see here is the Anaconda, the circle. Please disregard that. I was pulling up the Anaconda environment while I was troubleshooting and putting in this answer, um, putting in this question to ChatGPT. So it actually has given me an output of an updated code. It's telling me instead of hist plot to add or to put in DIST, so as a dis distribution plot. So let's go ahead and input this code and see what the output is. And so, wow, it's giving us a distribution plot. So it's a distribution of our FICO scores, but in a distribution plot here. And so I'm just deleting these other cells that had the hist plot. But now it's up to us to make the determination, does this look correct, right? So we're analyzing this and seeing, even though ChatGPT recommended this, is this really the correct uh, view that we want to see as well as the correct bit number? And here we see we are looking at a heat map. This is a correlation map. We are trying to see how our data is correlated or the relationships of our data in this plot. And so this actually came out pretty well. Heat maps provide a color coded representation of the correlations, which makes it easier to identify patterns and relationships. This video is nearing to an end. This is only step one. We have many, many steps. And so we will pick up where we left off. If you have been provided any value, if you enjoyed this information in this video, please do not hesitate to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Until next time, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, ChatGPT is not a replacement. It is there to guide and help and assist.